Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back. My name is Susie and we're at the end of the series for the renovations on my 1968 mobile home. So this is part four out of four. As a quick review, we have seen how the kitchen, the bathrooms and the bedrooms have been transformed. So in this video, we're gonna go over the dining room and the living room and also three updates, easy updates that you can do in your house that are budget friendly and three must have tools that I wish somebody had told me in the beginning that I needed to have to get all my projects done easier and without a hassle. All right, let's get started. This is the living room and as I've shown you in previous videos, the walls on this whole house were panels, which really aged the house and made it look well like an old 1968 mobile home that came with the mini curtains to prove it. The panel walls of course come with the strips or the trim, so I'll show you how to deal with those. Newer homes though nowadays come with drywall and high ceilings, so it feels more like a regular house, although a home is a home. Doing renovations while you're just moving into a house is super tricky and hard, but that's just what we did. We knew that we needed to start doing renovations in the other parts of the house so we concentrated everything here in the living room but one of the first things that we did do is get rid of that carpet it was so dirty so smelly and very unsanitary so we knew we needed to get rid of it one of the casualties though was my mom's phone when in one of those roll-ups that we did I didn't know much about renovations, but what I did know is that those strips in the panels had to go. They couldn't stay, and so I took them out. It was really easy. You just use a spatula and pliers, or if they have a little bit of caulking, just use one of those cutting knives and score it and take it off. Then I either took out the nails or hammered them into the studs. That way the panels could be secured. So I learned that before putting the tape, you first put in the joint compound, a light layer, then the tape, then with a spatula you take off the excess, let it dry, and then repeat with a joint compound with thin layers and sanding in between those layers. I also use a wet microfiber cloth to feather out the edges. It helps out a lot. I've said it before and I'll say it again, if I could do it all over again, I would definitely use a drywall for mobile homes because it took me way longer to get rid of those strips and cover them all up. Not only did I do that, I also tried to cover all the little ridges in the panels and it was really a pain. So if you have the budget, just save yourself a lot of pain and do the drywall. I think that working on your walls before working on the floors is the best thing to do and the wisest because that way you will paint, you will fix everything that you need to do and you won't have to worry about damaging the floors. And talking about paint, that is my next budget friendly update that you can do for your house. Just using paint transforms the whole space. And that's exactly what I did. I painted the walls, I painted the trim, on the windows, on the ceiling, on the floor, everywhere. Paint is awesome. As you can see, my cousin Byron is making a comeback. He's actually the one who first installed the, the floors there for the living room and dining room and taught me how to do it. He was working so fast, I could hardly keep up with him. I do want to mention that if you're doing renovations, you're going to go through a really rough time trying to get things worked out, but in the end, it's all worth it. I had to sleep in the living room for a few months and we had to move and juggle furniture back and forth. But remember, there's a goal in mind. So if you're in the middle of a renovation, you can do this. So here's another example of how paint can transform anything. This is the front door and as you can see it was really brown. So a few coats of semi-gloss paint and it was transformed. If you haven't subscribed, 
you can go ahead and do so right now. YouTube is telling me that 97% of you guys are not subscribed, so they can't send you notifications when a new video of mine is coming out. So you can go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment whatever you can do to help out. It'll tell the algorithm that Susie Makes It is helping you make your house your home. And it'll recommend me to more of you guys. All right, so with that out of the way, let's continue. After fixing and painting the walls and installing the floors, the next natural thing that we needed to do was to install the trim. And that's exactly what we did. This table saw was actually a loaner from my friend Eloisa and her husband. Comment below if you already saw the kitchen video and know what a good friend she is. And while I was able to operate this machine, it was really scary. So the first thing that I should have bought, and that's my first must-have tool, is a miter saw. It's safer, it's easier to use, and all the angle cuts and the straight cuts are a breeze. And that's mostly where you're going to need anyways. And since I'm on a roll, let's just head into my must-have tool number two, the nail gun. You're going to need this when you're doing trim because I was doing it with a hammer, as you can see there, and that was taking me forever. I don't even remember when I started using the nail gun, but it was just like a game changer. Tip number three is just update those blinds. Those are really outdating your house. They are brown, the ones that came with my house, and also the trim. So first thing, I changed out the blinds. I went with a two inch thickness or width for each of the blinds, and that makes it look more moder modern and brighter. And then uh, the other thing that I did was that I painted the trim on all of those windows. And from here on out, it's all bonus tips, guys. We added recess lights because houses around this year don't have any regular lighting installed. And so all we could do was plug in lamps and that wasn't enough light for me. So I hired out the job, but the ceiling that was nice and clean got all dirty. So I had to clean it and kind of like touch it up with a little bit of paint. And I also did some caulking, if you see there. Um, it had like a gap so I just added the caulking and then painted again and it looked really nice. I asked you guys how I could help you in these areas in your house and our friend here at Susie Makes It, Nancy Slider from Florida, asked the question about her ceiling. She has some long panels, skinny panels, and she was wondering if she could add a trim in between the joints. And I think it can be done if it bothers her too much but her ceiling apart from that is not damaged or needs paint so like she said herself and i agree if it ain't broke don't fix it must have tool number three is the caulk gun and this one is so inexpensive but so so helpful it is used to finish the trim so that there are no gaps and you can leave a professional finish and nowadays there's even automatic caulk guns which is awesome but not really necessary they are a bit more expensive the cheapest i found was the ryobi for 50 dollars and then i saw one that was even 270 dollars but that's too much i think so this is another way to join the different floors i left a small gap in between them and then i added the caulk which is for floors and it helped held up really well during the three years we lived there The living room and dining room were both in an open concept, so I repeated the same steps that I did with the living room. I changed out the blinds, I painted the trim, painted the walls, painted the hutch, which made such a huge difference as you can see right here, just day and night, and it brightened up the space so much. I was really happy with this. And small things like changing out the light fixture right there made a huge difference as well. And now is our, what we see here is our entrance and what is the living room and dining room together. I think it's um, a spacious space and also right here is the dining room and we have this big space over here 
Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Chubby. <laughs> this big space here, which um, leaves us some space for the like the entrance. And I see my sister there. <laughs> She's been trying to hide still. <laughs> So we lived in this house for about three years, but then we decided to sell because my brother and my sister came over from Guatemala to live here in the US. And that was just a huge blessing for our family because we were reunited. So I just want to say thank you God and also thank you to my cousin Pepe because he was a huge part in us getting here to this point where we are all together. We're also very thankful because we had our brothers from church come over and help us paint the house. They pressure washed it first, as you can see there, and then they used a professional spray gun, which made things go really, really fast. And they were there super early in the morning as well, so thank you for all the help that we received. My dad was there too, as you can see, painting with his brush, and we were able to finish painting and we were able to finish everything on time. So while we say goodbye to what our family called the Madonna house because of the street that we lived on, we say hello to our new house, which I am so excited to share with you. All the projects that we've done and we keep on doing so stay tuned and check out these videos here and god bless you guys until next time